Unstable internet personalities are stirring the conspiratorial pot again about the Talmud, and while there's zero merit to their theories, it's still healthy to explain what the Talmud is, both philosophically and historically. God gave us the Torah some three and a half thousand years ago, and in it are laws. Now, those laws would be almost completely incomprehensible if it weren't for an accompanying explanation. That accompanying explanation is known as the oral tradition. We believe that that oral tradition was given by God to Moshe with the written Torah. So, for example, tefillin. It says in the Torah, thou shall place it as a sign on your arm and as a sign between your eyes. Tefillin, we know, are black and are square and are made from leather and have compartments. And in those compartments are parchment. And on that parchment is written different texts from the Torah. All of that we wouldn't have if it weren't for this oral tradition, which was passed down with the written law. Now, you may have the theological question, why didn't God simply include all of the laws in the written law? Why do you even need an oral tradition? And it's quite important to have an oral tradition mystically, but on the simplest level, the reason for this was to be more pithy, to be more concise. For example, the mitzvah of tefillin filled one verse in the Torah. If all of the details that were passed down in the oral tradition were actually written down, it probably would fill, you know, I don't know, 30 to 60 verses. And do that to all the mitzvahs in the Torah, the Torah would just be, instead of five books of Moses, I don't know, 50 books of Moses or more. Now, besides for the specifics of every mitzvah, we also have the multitude of questions with how mitzvahs interact with each other and real life. So, for example, if I only have enough money to either buy tefillin or buy wine and challah for Shabbats, which one should I do? Which one takes precedence? Or if I don't have an arm, how do I put on tefillin? Or if I am constantly distracted by my work, should I bother putting on tefillin if I'm busy thinking about business? All of these questions are not addressed directly in the written law, nor in the oral tradition. Fortunately, a part of the oral tradition was something called the 13 principles of Torah interpretation, with which we can analyze the written law and the oral tradition. Now, those 13 principles of Torah interpretation have to be applied methodically and exactly. And that's all the debates in the Talmud. Someone takes a stance and says, this is my opinion. When this situation arises, I think based on the source material and my logical application of the 13 principles of Torah interpretation, I think the conclusion should be this. Comes along the other opinions and they say, no, you're completely wrong. If you applied it logically, it would be this way. In most cases, the decision of who was right was by majority vote. So now you know generally what the thousands of pages of Talmud are all about.